Hi everyone, it's Mr. Francie here and I hope you're all doing well and having an amazing or have had an amazing week and if not amazing then I hope it's been at least good for you. It's been a very, very busy month for me. <laughs> Oh, you gotta love these weekly vlogs. I mean, because <laughs> I can just, I mean, anything that's come up for me during the past week, it can be, it can go into this video. <laughs> and oh my gosh, I am just, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever heard this great saying? I heard this great saying that, uh, for the first time, I think about five years ago, which is sometimes we laugh so that we don't cry. <laughs> And, you know, there's a lot associated with that. Um, laughing puts you in a more positive frame of mind as opposed to crying, which doesn't. And I am not at all saying that crying is a bad thing and we shouldn't cry because crying does have its time and its place and can be at, at minimal, very uh, cathartic. So don't think I'm, I'm saying that we can't cry and when we shouldn't cry because absolutely we can and absolutely we should. But um, sometimes, <laughs> especially when we're going through a lot, the best thing we can do is just laugh it off <laughs> and keep moving forward. And um, uh, today, by the way, is uh, Sunday the 28th of January, and this is a weekly vlog that is covering the 22nd of January through to the 28th of January 2024. And I seriously... <laughs> I have been getting so much done this week, every day, or sorry, I should say every night before the following day, I would be writing out lists of things that I need to get done in order to just make things easier on myself, you know, gotta love lists. I mean, I'm a list person. Are you a list person? If you are a list person, let me know in the comments below. And if you're not a list person, that's fine, let me know that too. <laughs> but I'm a list person. I love of making lists because it helps to keep me on track and when you get as busy as I have been this month because I've been so <laughs> so very busy this month I mean I mean I would just like can I just go on a holiday <laughs> I'm just gonna go on a holiday and just I don't know to somewhere nice and lay in a hammock and, you know, have a nice drink. I honestly don't know what I would be drinking. Maybe some Cosmos. That would be nice. I haven't had a Cosmopolitan in a long time. I'll just go lay in a hammock and have a Cosmo and I'll be fine. <laughs> um, but anyway... Um, yeah, so I, I, I would I write out these lists because they help to keep me on track. And... Um, it was all going really, really well, uh, up until and including yesterday, I got through extra stuff. I added extra things to my list to make today a lot easier because I'm back, today being Sunday, I'm back at work tomorrow. So I wanted to have less to do today so I could enjoy today. And then all of a sudden, as I am sitting down today and looking at my list, Yep, suddenly I realised, no, Mr. Francie, we need to add about five or six more things to that list, and we thought we were just going to have a nice, easy day. What is that? What is a nice, easy day these days anymore? <laughs> Oh, it is what it is. But anyway, we are here. Hello. <laughs> oh, I hope you enjoy the ramblings of one Mr. Francie because it's a rather rambly video. <laughs> and I do love that. I, I love, I mean, there are definitely videos that I uh, put out here on my, my booktube channel that are a lot more of a serious nature. And then the reading, well, reading vlogs, they were called Once Upon a Time, now they're called Weekly Vlogs, because it's just so much more appropriate, um, because it's not just about reading, <laughs> it's about everything, including reading, <laughs> but um, these types of videos to me have always been a lot more casual, so, you know, you can just talk about whatever and just... <laughs> 
<laughs> be casual. But anyway, I hope you're enjoying rambling, Mr. Francie. <laughs> I do have things to discuss with reading, and I have other things to discuss. My goodness, wait till we get to the TV part, because I just, I don't even know anymore what's going on with me. I start a show, and I, I start a series, I should say, a, a TV series, and I get to a certain point, and then I stop, and <laughs> I go on and watch something else, and then I get to a certain point with that one, and then I stop, and then I go on to something else, and in the spirit of being a list person, it's important for you to know that I will write out a list of each season, and within the current season of whatever show I'm watching, I write out a list of all the episodes so I can check them off as I go along, and I put them on my Discord server. Link to my Discord is in the description if you want to join us. We always have a lot of fun over there. Um, yeah, so uh, that I can, you know, keep uh, myself up to date and keep myself honest getting through every episode to get all the way through. And, um, yeah, it's kind of been just really interesting because I, because I am such a list person, I will stick to one series and just completely binge that. And then maybe I'll have a couple of side things that I watch. But other than that, I have one main series that I'm going through and I won't watch anything else until that main series is done. And all of a sudden in this past, you know, week or two, I probably have like six, seven, eight different series open at the moment, which is rather overwhelming for someone like me who, when I start something, I need to finish it. <laughs> so, you know, it comes back to the list, you know, I have this list and I, I'm, yeah, currently I have a, uh, we'll get to what the show is later on, but I have a show on my Discord server that I'm working through and I'm somewhere in season two of that show, which is very early on. And all of a sudden went, yeah, I think I'm going to now watch this show. Oh, I like this show, but now we're going to watch this show, and now we're going to watch this show, and now we're going to watch this show. I mean, it's just, it has been very reflective of how things have been for Mr. Francie in the month of January, because any time I think something is going to go a certain way, no, we're going to take a sharp left turn, <laughs> and it's going to go another way. But one good thing is that I have already mapped out my TBRs for every month up until and including November. So I have the first 11 months of the year's TBR has been mapped out for this year, which I'm very thankful for because I wouldn't have time right now to create a TBR if it wasn't. So everything happens for a reason, right? <laughs> um, but one thing I am very thankful for is that every single month up until and including November has 12 books assigned for that month's TBR. And I am on track and I'm very happy about that. Given everything else <laughs> that I've had to do and everything else I'm going through, I am very, very, very happy about that. Um, okay, let's, um, we will get to books, but, uh, yeah, I feel like since I'm already in this mode, I might as well touch upon other things first. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who commented regarding, uh, my anxiety and now being on meds. I really do appreciate it. I have not had time to book the, uh, counselling appointment, so, yeah, that is what it is. I'll get there one day well, as soon as Mr. Fancy has a moment to breathe. <laughs> I mean, any of you out there feeling me right now, as soon as I get a moment to breathe, you know, it's like, it, it, you know, anyone out there, the same as me, that January has just been so hectic because so much has been going on that it's like, can I just have a moment to breathe? Because it's like you're making a, 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 you're bringing forth this bargaining chip with whoever you're bargaining with. You know, if you're religious, it'd be a higher entity, and if not, then I don't know, with yourself or whatever. You put up this general bargaining chip, and you say, "Can I just have a moment to breathe?" Because then, in that moment that I'm meant to be breathing, I can then do this. <laughs> And that's me. It's like, can I just have a moment to breathe? Because as soon as I have that moment to breathe, I'll make that counselling appointment, which kind of voids the whole, I'm going to take a moment to breathe, because it's more, I'm taking a moment to breathe, because I still need to do this thing. 
I haven't been able to get to yet, but that's okay. I've been taking the meds. The meds are great. Um, so there was a complication. I'm going to have to bring the energy down a little bit to discuss that because it wouldn't be appropriate to be laughing through that. But, um, yeah, there was a bit of a situation where I um, I took the meds for the first three days and then I was coughing a lot and I was dealing with pain in my ribs. I was speaking to my doctor about this and the doctor uh, felt that the rib pain was connected to the coughing, which could have been just a viral thing, but it also could have been a side effect of the medication. So I was advised to stop taking the medication for two days uh, to ensure that the coughing is completely gone and then try again. I didn't need to wean myself off it because it had only been three days. And then to see, you know, once I do get back on it after those two days, if the coughing does come back, because obviously if it does, then it is directly uh, related to the... Um, to the meds and they'll need to change it for something else. But the good news is I have since gone through those two days, restarted taking the meds again and haven't been experiencing that anymore. So I'm very, very thankful for that. And the meds seem to be doing their job. It's, it's really interesting because you may feel that the energy that I'm exuberating in this weekly vlog, I don't remember the last time I was this happy, <laughs> um, maybe a result of the, the meds, but honestly, I don't think it is. I think I'm just, I don't know. I'm just in this state of mind of I've had so much to do this month. Um, and it's better to laugh than cry. <laughs> um, because I'm not normally like this, but now that I'm on video, I'm, I'm all happy. I'm honestly, you know, regardless of everything I've had to go through, which again, I can't stress has uh, enough has been a lot <laughs> that I've had to go through this month. Um, just, yeah, like, imagine those physical inbox trays just piled with things up to the roof, and then you, your, your goal each day is to get through everything in that inbox tray. You do, you go home, you're satisfied, you come back into your office the next day, and again, it's piled all the way up to the roof. I mean, it's just been go, go, go in a situation where I would love to stop, stop, stop. I feel like I'm being made to go, 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 but anyway, it's fine. Um... But in this moment, I'm just thankful to be here, and you all just make me so happy. Booktube is, for me, Booktube is one of the best places on social media. Social media comes with its own, like, energies and stuff, and can be really, you know, tough, if you'll allow me to say, energetically to navigate, because, you know, it comes with a lot of densities and issues and yeah just really can get me down seeing certain things on certain social media but when it comes to booktube generally it's just a very positive beautiful section of youtube so i'm just really happy to be here to be talking to you all so thank you for giving me this time to go on a bit of a I don't know if I want to call it a rant. Um, you know, it's a rant, but it's like a positive rant. <laughs> and let's continue on. All right, let's talk about TV while I'm here. We'll end with reading. Um, so let's talk about TV. I am, so the show that I am in the second season of is, um, Oh my gosh, what's it called? Vampire Diaries. I have to remember what it was called there. Yeah, because that's how long it's been. It's Vampire Diaries. I am up to season two, episode 15, and I have been up to that for a while now. I then went on to watch a whole host of other things. The Traders. Oh my gosh, The Traders USA season two. I was talking about this in my last weekly, uh, my last weekly vlog. I love this show so much. Please keep Parvati in for as long as possible because I love her. <laughs> um, I never knew Phaedra before, um, uh, traders, but I think she was definitely well chosen to be a trader. <laughs> and, um, Dan, uh, Dan, I knew from Big Brother. Uh, so yeah, those three being the traders and really, really enjoying it. I was watching an interview actually with Sandra, um, Sandra Diaz Twine, a two time survivor winner is currently in, uh, US season two traders as we speak <laughs> at the, this time. Who knows if she's been murdered, <laughs> as Alan would say, murdered. <laughs> um, if you're watching this, I don't know, in a couple of weeks, but at the current point in time, Sandra's still there. And I was watching Sandra do an interview with uh, Rachel Riley and Johnny Fairplay, who I really don't love, but they knew each other from Pearl Islands, Survivor Pearl Islands, and some other woman that I didn't know. And 
Sandra was making a point because they were saying to Sandra she should do the international versions of the traders because she has done a a stint on Australian Survivor. And she was saying, oh, yeah, anywhere that, you know, speaks English, I would do it because there are international uh, versions that don't speak English. And she said, but um, I won't be doing it in Australia because... um, it's not there anymore. And they're going, wait, what? It's not there anymore. And I was doing the same thing. Like, what do you mean it's not there anymore? Like, it's been here for the past two years. I love Australian Survivor. What, what are you talking about? And I found out that Sandra was absolutely right. Um, she, very candidly, Sandra was saying that apparently it didn't rate very well in Australia. And so because of that, they've had to axe the Australian edition. And she's right. It has been axed. We don't know if it will come back in the future. There is every opportunity they were saying that it may come back in the future, but for now, it doesn't look like it is coming back, which is really sad because I liked the Australian version. I think that the US edition of any reality show, in my opinion, I feel like I'm committing heresy with my country here, but in my opinion, the U- a US reality show is so much better and far superior than the Australian edition. But anyway, in saying that, I liked Australian traders, so I'm really sad that it's gone. But um, anyway... Uh, so, yeah, I'm currently watching that at the moment, but I'm watching that week to week, and there's only been five episodes out so far, so I've still got a long way to go with that. Uh, I started an Australian series, and I finished it, (laughs) which, wow, like, I just went... I flew through binging that. And this is a TV series that if you're not Australian, you may not know. Although in America, they tried to do a series. They tried to copy it, which would have been great, but it didn't work. Um, And the Australian series is called Kath and Kim. So basically it's incredibly Australian. It is comedy. You know, these characters, we have Kath, Kath Day and her mother, Kim. And so not her mother, the other way around. Kath Day and her daughter, Kim. Kath Day is the mum. And uh, in the first episode, we're introduced to Kim's partner, uh, who I don't remember his name. I didn't know who they were. Brett. <laughs> Kim's partner, Brett, and Kat's um, partner who goes on to become her husband, Kel, and um, yeah, they, and um, um, Sharon, who is Kim's friend, played by the wonderful Magda Zabansky. Um, and yeah, they just, yeah, all these hilarious things ensue, but it's very, very, very Aussie to the umpteenth degree. So if you want to see what Aussies are like, I, I liked, I'd rather not call myself an Aussie. <laughs> if anything, I call myself an Australian. And if not that, I call myself a Dutchie because my mother's family is, is Dutch from Holland. So even though I live in Australia, I feel more like I'm Dutch than I'm Australian, but I was born here. I was born in Australia, but yeah. But anyway, if you want to see how your true blue Aussie mates are like... <laughs> Watch Kath and Kim. (laughs) But anyway, I binged that very quickly, very much enjoyed it. Uh, I was also uh, getting through Will and Grace, classic Will and Grace, because I love that show, and then I kind of got over that. Then I watched the latest episode of Handmaid's Tale, absolutely loved the latest episode, oh my gosh, so good, Uh, and then went back and started watching Handmaid's Tales over again from season one, and then kind of got over that, so it's really been just, I mean, it's like a Rolodex, for those of you who remember the Rolodex, it's like a Rolodex of TV shows for me at the moment, and I don't really know which way's up anymore when it comes to TV, and I think I'm just going to watch what I'm going to watch when I'm going to watch it. I watched the Australian Open uh, women's singles final tennis final last night. Irina Sabalenka is the champion. I am very, very happy about that. I wanted her to be the champion from day one, so that made me very happy. Unfortunately, in the men's, we, we are waiting to see who's going to win that. That will happen tonight, being played out between Daniel Medvedev and uh, the other one, which is uh, Sina, Yannick Sinner, uh, and we'll see who's going to win that when that time comes. But uh, I was going 
going for Taylor Fritz, of course, and he made it to the quarterfinals where he valiantly fell to Novak Djokovic. And I'm very proud of Taylor, my dear Tay Tay, <laughs> as I call him affect- affectionately. And I hope that he has an amazing rest of the year. Carlito, aka Carlos Alcaraz, did uh, very well. Unfortunately, he fell out in the quarterfinals as well. So he was gone. Novak fell. Everyone has their own opinions on Novak Djokovic. I am not his biggest fan. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I'm just not a fan of, of Novak's, but that's okay. We'll just move right along in case you are, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> so I was quite okay with the fact that he didn't make it to the final. Um, and yeah, we'll see how the rest of the year goes, but, uh, yeah, tennis is nearly done in Australia after tonight's men's singles final. All the players will leave Australia and, um, yeah, go wherever they're going. So that's that. All right, we have about 10 minutes left, so let's discuss reading. I have three books to discuss with you all, so let's begin. So the first book that I read in this past week was this book, Small Town Pride by Phil Stamper. This is a middle grade LGBTIQ plus book, and I gave this book an overwhelming five stars. Before I go any further, can I just say, welcome back, Phil Stamper. Welcome back to my life. I am so happy you are in my life, Phil Stamper, because you are such an incredible author, and I missed the time when we were apart, because for reasons, I went through a period where I was no longer reading Phil Stamper's works, and I'm now catching up, and I started my catch-up with Small Town Pride, and it was absolutely fantastic. Phil Stamper's first two books were YA, this is his first middle grade, and even as a middle grade, it was fantastic. This guy deserves so much credit and so many medals and awards and everything, because he is just phenomenal as an LGBTIQ plus author. So the premise of this book is when Jake's dad hangs a comically large pride flag in their front yard in an overblown show of love, the mayor begins to receive complaints. A few people are even concerned the flag will lead to something truly outlandish, a pride parade, except Jake doesn't think that's a ridiculous idea. Why can't they hold a pride festival in Barton Springs? The problem is, Jake knows he'll have to get approval from the town council, and the mayor won't be on his side. And as Jake and his friends try to find a way to bring Pride to Barton Springs, it seems suspicious that the mayor's son, Brett, suddenly wants to spend time with Jake. But someone that cute couldn't possibly be in league with his mayoral mother, could he? So, to my thoughts, this was vintage Phil Stamper. Having read The Gravity of Us and As Far As You'll Take Me, I was already a Phil Stamper stan, but this book was categorized as middle grade, and so I went in cautiously, as I'd only ever read YAs from him. I needn't have been worried, though. Stamper shines as he always does. Jake is a character with such a cute, sweet, upbeat personality that it's hard to not love him. His best friend is so supportive of him, and the moments between Jake and the mayor's son uh, is so adorable. Not as hard-hitting as the other two works I've read by Stamper, but still 100% worthy of five stars. It was phenomenal. I highly recommend this book. It was just... The one word I would associate with this book was adorable. It was just so adorable, so cute. I just truly enjoyed my time reading this book, and I highly recommend it. And Phil Stamper, welcome back into my life. An overwhelming five stars for Small Town Pride. The next book that I read was this book, Motorhomes, Maps and Murder, which is book number five in the Camper and Criminal series by Tonya Kappes. This is an adult cozy mystery series, and an adult cozy mystery book, therefore, and I gave this book four stars. Look, I thought it was a good book. I did not think it was a great book, but I thought it was a good book. So, Mae West, owner of Happy Trails Campground, never thought she would become an actress like her namesake. Calling herself an actress might be a far stretch, as she plays a minor role in the local Civil War reenactment battle at Camp Wildcat. When the reenactment doesn't go as planned, not one, but two of the townsfolk aren't playing dead. They were murdered. So, to my thoughts, and I thought it was okay. 
The first half was a little slow for me, and I didn't find myself interested in the reenactment at all, but once the murder happened halfway through the book, I found myself intrigued. I'm looking forward to continuing on with the series, and a special shout out to Agnes, who is Hank's grandmother, as I really enjoyed my time with her. Yeah, I thought it was okay. It wasn't bad by any means, so it was it was it was better than average. It was better than average, but it wasn't certainly wasn't the best uh campus and criminals that I have read at this point. And the final book that I read this week was this book, Canyons, Caravans, and Cadavers by Tonya Kappas. This is book number six in the Campus and Criminal series, again an adult cozy, and I gave this book 4.5 stars. And to me, this is actually one of the best in the series, so it was a good turnaround from the last one. So the premise of this one is, when the principal of normal high school asks Mae West to teach a semester on small town economics, Mae is thrilled and happy to teach the young people, but when a fellow teacher and archery coach Roger Carlson is found stone cold dead, face down in one of Happy Trail's camper ground campers with an arrow sticking out of his back, it puts a dampener on the thriving campground when tourists cancel their reservations and May's excitement to teach. So, this is one of my favourites in the series, though not a five-star read for me. I really enjoyed the mystery and May being offered the opportunity to teach. The reveal was good, and the final climax was very entertaining. I also loved the big thing that happened at the end with Hank, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that uh, plays out in the next book. I gave this one 4.5 stars, so the previous one was 4 stars, this was 4.5. So let's quickly have a look uh, and see what I plan to do for the upcoming week. So... <clears throat> Excuse me. So this upcoming week is going to be broken up with uh, the end of January and the beginning of February. So we're basically, this is it, you know, last couple of days or whatever to get through the last couple of books for the month. So I'm today going to start this book, Hitches, Hideouts and Homicide. Uh, this is, uh, this is <laughs> book number seven, I do believe. <laughs> In the Campers and Criminals series. I do not want to get that wrong, so I'm going to quickly have a look. Let's just confirm, shall we? Yes, it is. It is book number seven in the Campers and Criminals series. I'm reading three Campers and Criminals books every single month this year, and uh, I'm reading them one after the other. So, yeah, book number seven is my next book. After that, I am finally, finally getting back to Zodiac Academy with this book, uh, which is Origins of an Academy Bully, and I'm really looking forward to that. It's a very, very quick novella, and so, yeah, it should speak about the origins of the bullies. I'm really looking forward to that. And then, my friends, I finally start my Famous Five journey with uh, Five on a Treasure Island by Enid Blyton, the first book out of 25. No, 25 or 21? 21, sorry. The first book out of 21 in the Famous Five series, and that will be the end of my reading month. And then I will pick up the first book that I plan to read in February, which will be this book, The Reckoning, by uh, Caroline Peckham, Peckham and Susan Valenti, which is book number three in the Zodiac Academy series. And the reason why I'm reading Origins of an Academy Bully and The Reckoning So Close Together is because Origins of an Academy Bully is so short, and The Reckoning is a very, very long book, so it's the first book I'm going to read in February. Okay, but yeah, so that is my uh, plans between now and uh, the end of next week, <laughs> which, as I say, includes wrapping up January and then starting February. My goodness, I hope that February is an easier month to get through, and I hope that you guys are doing okay and getting through everything that you all need to get through okay as well. Let me know how your week has gone. Let me know how your month has gone in the comments section section below, and uh, yeah, sometimes it's just easier to laugh than cry, so have a good laugh today, and uh, yeah, as I like to say to my friends, go off and eat a bowl of ice cream, <laughs> or do something nice for yourself, because uh, we all deserve it, it's been a very tough month. <laughs> all right, we're going to let you all go with peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. Please do be kind and love one another and spread your sparkling energy all throughout the world. And until next time, happy reading. Bye, everyone.